Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Shots of Jameson, where the topic of the month is the Tesla Model 3. If you are a Model 3 reservation holder or you are thinking about becoming one, right now is a very exciting time because the last week or so, a ton of Model 3 news has come out. And let me tell you about it right now. Ludicrous mode has been confirmed as an option in the Model 3. Supercharging is not free anymore, even for Model S and Model X. Model 3 batteries will be smaller in size, but still be able to produce the same amount of power as their Model X and Model S cousins. The rumors about a heads-up display in the Model 3 have all but been confirmed. I've been able to figure out exactly when Model 3 Reveal Part 2 is going to happen. And last but not least, we're going to talk about something called the Snake Charger. Snake charger. And no, that's not a USB cable that you plug into your pet snake to electrify it. So let's kick things off by talking about ludicrous mode in the Model 3. Now, it's not new news that ludicrous mode will be in the Model 3, but it has been confirmed by Elon Musk himself. He tweeted that uh, Model 3 will in fact have ludicrous mode. Now, I did say in the previous video that the Model 3 would be capable of zero to 60 in two and a half seconds. There was some backlash in the comments about that. People saying that it can only do zero to 60 in under six seconds. It's very important to keep in mind that when the zero to 60 time for the Model 3 was originally announced, they were very specific to call out the base model zero to 60 time. No other zero to 60 time has ever been commented on by Elon or anybody from Tesla. But if you do the math, which we'll do in a second, it's safe to assume that the Model 3 will be very, very fast, if not approaching two and a half seconds. Let's look at some known facts and see what we can deduce from this. The smallest battery you can get in a Model S right now is a 60 kilowatt battery. Now, Tesla has confirmed that the smallest battery you can get in a Model 3 will be smaller than a 60 kilowatt hour battery. We don't know what that is. It could be 50, it could be 45, we don't know. So a Model S with a 60 kilowatt hour battery can go from zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. And that's roughly the same for a Model 3 with a smaller battery. So if the base model of a Model 3 with a 45 kilowatt hour battery can go from zero to 60 in the same amount of time as a Model S with a 60 kilowatt hour battery, it stands to reason that you can scale that going up. So where a Model S P100D with ludicrous mode can go from zero to 60 in two and a half seconds, a Model 3 with ludicrous mode and an 85 kilowatt hour battery should be able to go from zero to 60 in the same amount of time. It's a really simple equation. If you look at a Model S equipped with ludicrous mode versus one that's not, the zero to 60 time difference is roughly one second. So let's take the zero to 60 time of a base Model 3, about five and a half seconds, and subtract one second because we know that it's gonna have ludicrous mode. That brings us down to four and a half seconds from zero to 60. Now, if you look at a Tesla that's equipped with all wheel drive versus not equipped with all wheel drive, the impact that that has on a zero to 60 time is roughly a half a second. So let's assume that not only is our base Model 3 going to be equipped with ludicrous mode, but it will also be equipped with all wheel drive. So let's remove an extra half a second off the four and a half we've already gotten down to, and that brings us down to four seconds. Now, we're still operating under the assumption that we're at the base model battery size. And something else that you can deduce from looking at Tesla's website is that whenever you increase the battery size 10 kilowatt hours, that equates to roughly a half a second decrease in the zero to 60 time. It is pretty safe to assume that there's going to be at least a 25 kilowatt hour gap from the smallest battery to the largest battery in the Model 3. So that means you've got about one and a quarter seconds of improvement for the zero to 60 time just due to the battery size alone. Now, if you assume the range in battery offerings for the Model 3 will be at least 25 kilowatt hours in difference, which it absolutely will be, probably more, we can assume that we can take another one and a quarter seconds off of the zero to 60 time that we've already been calculating. So that brings it down to roughly 2.75 seconds. That's right there next to two and a half seconds. Add in the fact that the Model 3 is a lot lighter than the Model S and the Model 3 batteries are going to be better technology than what's in the Model S right now. And I can almost guarantee you that not only will the Model 3 go from zero to 60 in two and a half seconds, but I would not be surprised at all if it is actually faster than the Model S. Now, some have critiqued this theory saying that since the Model 3 is actually smaller than the Model S, there's no way that you can fit a battery in the Model 3 big enough to achieve the same acceleration as you do in a Model S. However, Tesla has been quoted as saying that the new battery technology in the Model 3 will be 30% more energy dense than what is in the Model S. So that means you can have a battery the size of a 70 kilowatt hour battery 
in a Model S. Take that same size, put it in a Model 3, and it will pack the power of a 100 kilowatt hour battery. Now this is great for a number of reasons. Tesla can reduce the amount of materials they're using to produce the batteries regularly, and they can pack way more punch into a Model 3 without being limited by the size of the car. Okay, moving on to the next topic. Supercharging is no longer free. Apparently, if you buy a Tesla Model X or a Model S after January 1st, 2017, you will no longer be put into the lifetime free supercharging plan that came before. If you wanna be able to use a supercharger free for the lifetime of your car, you have to buy a Model S or a Model X before the end of the year. Model 3s will never be part of the lifetime charging program. There is some speculation that the completely decked out Model 3s, ludicrous mode, all the options, all the bells and whistles will have lifetime charging included for free, but nobody has confirmed that. What Tesla's going to be doing from now on is giving you roughly a thousand miles of free charging every year. The cool thing about this program is that if you don't use all 1,000 miles in a year, they roll over to the next year and you then have the cumulative total at your disposal. I think this program is completely fair and it's a great idea. Tesla had to move to this type of program at some point because it's completely unrealistic to believe that they're going to provide free charging at all their superchargers for every car they ever make for all time. That's just totally ridiculous. And as long as we're on the topic of superchargers, let's make one thing very clear. Superchargers are not intended to be used as a daily charging station. Superchargers sole use is supposed to be for long distance travel. Here's what not to do. Do not drive to work in the morning, park at a supercharger and plug your car in all day while you're at work, and then walk over to it, unplug it, and drive home. That is the incorrect use of a supercharger. If everybody tried to use superchargers like that, they would always be packed and nobody would ever be able to use one. How you should be using superchargers if you're driving on a longer trip, say from San Diego to San Francisco or something like that. You're intended to stop at the superchargers on the way to your destination so that you can quickly charge and make it all the way there without having to worry about range anxiety or how you're gonna get from A to B. Don't be a supercharger hog. All right, now let's talk about this interior. I am super excited about this interior because it is 99.9% .9 going to be one of the coolest heads up displays you've ever seen. Tesla hasn't come out and said it directly, but if you look at all the indicators, it's extremely obvious that that's what's gonna happen. So Tesla has hired people that specialize in heads up displays. But the biggest indicator I think is something that's been overlooked by a lot of people. I'm sure at this point you've seen the interior of a Model 3 and you've noticed that there's no instrument cluster. Now, when they first revealed the Model 3 on the test drives, there were a lot of videos showing the speed being displayed in the upper left hand corner of the large 15 inch touchscreen in the center of the car. I am positive they were only doing this because they didn't have the heads up display finished yet and they needed to have the speed displayed on the car for legal reasons. One of the biggest barriers for putting a heads up display in a car is finding the space around the instrument cluster to put all that hardware to project that image up onto the windshield. This may have been a serious driving factor in removing the instrument cluster. By doing that, they've created a ton of space on the dash where you can now insert that hardware with plenty of space to make a spectacular display on the windshield. Now, 95% of this is speculation. Nobody can prove it, nobody can disprove it for absolute fact until part two of the Model 3 release sometime later this year or early next year. Up until now, nobody's really known exactly when that's gonna be. Elon has always been quoted as saying, oh, it's gonna happen closer to launch, but he's never given a time frame until now. Elon spoke at an event about a week ago. Now the subject matter of this event was their solar roof technology and their merger with Solar City. At the end of his speech, he was taking questions from the crowd. And while most of the questions were about the solar roof technology, there were a couple people who squeaked in questions about the Model 3. And although you couldn't hear them asking the questions because they weren't mic'd up, it was very obvious when they asked questions about the Model 3 because Elon was very quick to say that that's not the subject matter, but then he would give a little tidbit of information anyway, kind of after the fact. Now, if you're watching this closely, one of the questions from the audience causes Elon to say, that's not the subject matter, but I would say three to four months from now, probably February or March. Now it's pretty obvious that that question was about Model 3 and when part two release was gonna be. Up until now, it's been nothing but speculation about the rough timing for that. It's now obvious that we're gonna see the final release of the Model 3. That means final interior, final exterior, because there will be some subtle exterior changes in February or March of 17. That is such a long way away. I think my hair is getting grayer every day waiting for this car. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about today is something called the snake charger. 
Now, if you've never seen this before, this thing is really, really cool. Essentially what it is, is an automatic charger that will plug itself into your car when you pull it back into the garage or when it pulls itself back into the garage. From the looks of it, it's going to be mounted on the wall and there's individual metal pieces all the way up this long spine looking piece that allows the arm to be manipulated in such a way that it can precisely locate and plug itself into the charger port on your Tesla car. This would be amazing. Do you realize what that would mean? When you combine automated charging with automated driving, that enables your car to act as an unmanned Uber or Lyft or whatever company you use vehicle that can constantly be making you money when you're not using it. That's amazing. So if you don't mind a bunch of random dirty strangers sitting in your car while you're not in it and probably doing really weird stuff to it that I don't even want to think about, you could potentially make a lot of money sitting on your couch eating bonbons. Snake Charger is real, it is confirmed, it is going to happen. All I can say is that if I was a taxi driver, I would be getting real scared right about now. Let me know in the comments down below when you think driverless cars will start picking people up and putting taxi drivers out of business. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you liked this video, and we'll be back with more videos next week. See you later.